Motorola is definitely getting serious in the Indian market with its launch of Moto One Power, which was a highly anticipated device, and the pricing was pretty good as well, even though it was increased by 500 rupees later on. Uh, Motorola has launched Moto E7 Plus in the market right now at the price tag of 10,000 rupees, and it does not come with Helio G80 or Helio G85 processor. It comes with Snapdragon. 460 processor. I know 460 seems like 400 series ka processor. It may not be that good, but this is the brand new 460 processor, which is pretty good. I would say uh, it can be compared with Helio G80 or G85. I'll talk more about that and how good the performance is or was uh, in later part of this video. First of all, let's start with the unboxing itself. Uh, as you already know, we are going to do a quick unboxing. So in the box, you get the Motorola phone with this type of sticker on the box. Like you do not get any screen protector on the device. Uh, not on the box, on the device, you get this type of uh, sticker which we are used to seeing on Motorola devices like I remember getting my Moto G series of devices like uh, a long time back and then those devices having these type of stickers, nostalgia sort of. Uh, in the box you will also get some manuals, a sim ejector tool, you will get a charger, this is a 10 watt charger provided in the box and you will also get, yes you heard it right. In 2020, you will be getting a micro USB cable inside the box itself because the device comes with a micro USB port. Now, it's uh, not just about micro USB port. There are a lot of things, a lot of good things about the Moto E7 Plus. So let's talk about those. First of all, let's start with the build quality. I have the blue color variant here and uh, this blue color is called Misty Blue and the color does look pretty good. Fingerprint sensor at the back side has Motorola logo inside it and it can be unlocked with a fingerprint sensor. I'll just keep my finger here and the device will get unlocked. I'll keep my finger here, the device gets unlocked. It's little bit slow to unlock as you can see. I'll keep my finger and it will get unlocked now. I'll keep my finger and the device will get unlocked now. It's not as fast as Realme or Redmi 9 Prime, Realme Narzo 20, which is also available for 10,500 rupees. Now let's talk about the device first. So build quality device, the device feels solid to hold in hand. Uh, the device comes with 5000 mAh battery, but still it does not weigh that much. I mean, you don't feel like you're holding a 5000 mAh device. That's the case with all the devices launched in 2020 somehow, like they don't feel heavy even after coming with huge batteries. Device also gets a dual camera setup or should I say single camera because second one is a depth sensor. There is no ultra wide sensor on this device whereas an Arzo 20 or even the Redmi 9 Prime gets that. And these are some of the sample shots which were clicked with the Moto E7 Plus. In my initial impressions, the pictures look pretty good but I am definitely missing the ultra wide angle lens even though on budget segment devices, ultra wide lenses or ultra wide angle lenses are not that great but in good lighting conditions, they do click very good pictures on Redmi 9 Prime or Nozzo 20. Uh, if that would have been there, this device or uh, the camera setup would have been much better. Device gets a dual SIM card slot, but this is a hybrid SIM card slot, meaning if you want to use a memory card, you will have to sacrifice on one SIM or if you have a single SIM only, then you can definitely expand the storage. At the 10,000 rupees price point, you are getting a 64 GB storage variant, which should be pretty good for most users. But yeah, talking about the 5000 mAh battery, obviously you will be able to get through one single day without any issues, like literally no issues whatsoever. But when it comes to charging the device from 0 to 100% with that 10 watt brick, which is provided in the box because the device does not support any fast charging, it will definitely take you two and a half to three hours at least to charge the device completely. And not just that, in 2020, the device gets a micro USB port, which was slightly disappointing for me. Uh, I was expecting a USB type C port considering all the other devices like Redmi 9 Prime, Narzo series of devices, Narzo 20 at least gets USB type C port out of the box and USB type C chargers and they support fast charging as well. Whereas this is stuck with 10 watt charging and a micro USB port. Now let's talk about one of the positive and very huge plus points of the Motorola device. And that's going to be the software experience. Let me just reduce the brightness a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, software experience because this is pure stock Android. I mean, not pure stock Android, but as close to stock Android as you can go. There are literally no bloatware applications. There are bloatware applications by Google, which you will probably never use. Let me just try uninstalling Google Fit. And uh, yes, it was uninstalled perfectly. So 
only Google applications are present, which will definitely not send you any spammy notifications like ye app install karo, dekho kya hota hai. Uh, whereas if you buy the Redmi 9 Prime, you will or uh, even Realme uh, Narzo series devices in some occasions, like on Redmi 9 Prime, you will definitely get spammy ads and spammy notifications consistently. Not in the UI, I'm saying notifications as ads and in the app, like when you install apps from Play Store, you will get ad, which is very annoying to me. And uh, that will not happen on the Moto E7 Plus. So if you are someone who is willing to pay extra uh, by losing out on some features, but getting that clean software experience with no ads whatsoever, then Moto E7 Plus is definitely the device to go for. I can say this because my mom is using the Redmi Note 7 and she keeps on asking me why this uh, uh, ad is coming on the lock screen. Whereas I disable me glance or whatever they call it like, uh, I don't know that keeps on enabling itself automatically. There are a lot of notifications. My mom yesterday only asked me why this app is sending me notifications again and again. It's irritating. Like I was surprised when she said that she did not complain much earlier, like a few months back, but now she has been complaining. So that's the experience that you will get with me. I like notifications which can be disabled once again yes in MIUI's defense but you do not want to do anything you just want clean software experience Moto E7 Plus is the device to go for and obviously if you want clean software experience without ads like it's obvious that Realme or uh, Redmi gets paid when they show an ad or they you get a notification and you click on it whereas Motorola does not have that revenue stream so that's why they'll obviously had to cut back on few features to meet the magical price tag of 10,000 rupees with micro USB port and hybrid SIM card slot uh, which uh, whereas the Redmi 9 Prime and Narzo 20 gets USB type C port fast charging support, uh, dedicated micro SD card slot and a slightly better processor. Snapdragon 460 processor is not bad, uh, but at the price of 10,000 rupees, I feel like Helio G85 processor definitely performs slightly better. It feels smoother to use the G85 processor. Plus in gaming, if you play PUBG, then G85 performs uh, better. But if you play COD, then Snapdragon 460 processor on the Moto E7 Plus will perform better. I'll be coming up with my full review of gaming on my gaming channel, Dhananjay Gaming, which will be linked in the description box below. Yes, subscribe to that channel if you haven't already. So this video is being shot on the Moto E7 Plus. Now there are a couple of things that I want to talk about. The device uh, comes with a micro USB port as I talked about uh, extensively. It does not support 5 GHz Wi-Fi, only 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi support is present, not just that. If you play PUBG Mobile or if you play COD Mobile, then gyroscope is not there on this device. So you will not be able to use gyroscope with the Moto E7 Plus as well, which was kind of a disappointment. And uh, we found that out when we started testing PUBG Mobile and we were trying to turn on the gyroscope, but it was not turning on. And then we realized, oh, no gyroscope in this device. And I guess that's pretty much it for the unboxing and initial impressions of the Moto E7 Plus. If you still have any more doubts, issues or queries regarding this device, do let me know about that in the comment section box below. Most importantly, will you pay a premium price to get a cleaner, better software experience with devices like Moto E7 Plus or micro USB uh, or uh, not having dedicated micro SD card slot are a huge deal breaker for you. Do let me know about that in the comment section box below. I do not talk about another thing which I thought I'll talk about at the end. The device gets a 720p display once again. The only device at the price of 10,000 rupees which was launched in like after the pandemic is the Redmi 9 Prime which comes with 1080p display which I feel is a very huge plus point uh, for the Redmi 9 Prime whereas this one gets a 720p display. Oh, you, you also get a dedicated Google Assistant button on the right side of the device. Simply press it once and uh, what is... Okay, wait. Oh. Open Dhananjay Bhosle on YouTube. As uh, you can see, Dhananjay Bhosle uh, searched on YouTube and it's showing my YouTube channel name. So dedicated Google Assistant button is also there. I personally find a dedicated button just for Google Assistant just a bit much because you can always long press on the home screen and uh, trigger Google Assistant or double press on the power button to trigger it. There are a lot of applications which will help you do that. Anyways, that's pretty much it for the video. If you enjoyed it, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, press the bell icon so that you get notified next time I upload a video like this one. So yeah, thank you guys. Thank you for watching.